everyone, so seeing as New Year's is tomorrow, I thought I would do a bit of a New Year's Eve inspired makeup tutorial. A little bit heavier than what I normally do, there's a little bit of glitter going on on the eye and even though tomorrow night I plan on just staying in with friends and eating a lot of cheese, probably having a bit of wine and dancing around to Jules Holland, I'm still going to throw this on because it's New Year's so why not? But I really like this makeup, it's a little bit like red toned and rusty on the eye. I've got a bit of a cat eye going on with some coal liner, I love the lip option and actually I really like the base that I used today. So there's a few new products thrown in there as well. So I hope you like it. So I just popped some lip balm on my lips because things were looking a bit dry. And then for foundation, I'm going to use this, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. And I use this in the shade 117 or Y225. It was very difficult to find a match in this foundation just because there are so many colours. I think there's about 40, which is great. Whoa. Oops. But it did mean that it was quite hard to colour match myself because I couldn't make it down to a counter, but I'm just going to apply this sort of more in the centre of my face where I need the most coverage. And then I'm going to use a beauty blender to blend it in because I've heard that's the best way to apply this stuff. Now I think this is one of the best colour matches I've ever had with a foundation. I feel like it's just the right amount of not too cool but not too warm at the same time. And it's got almost like a medium-ish coverage. There's no SPF in there which is why I've picked it for this look because if you are going somewhere where photographs are going to be taken it's nice not to have to worry about a flashback and looking like Casper in all of the photos. So I'm just taking another kind of half a pump over any areas of extra redness I've got going on. And I do actually prefer this to the original HD formula because I find that it's just a bit creamier on the skin. I found the original HD to be a little bit drying, whereas this adds a bit more of a glow. Then for concealer, I thought I would use the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. I use this in Light 18. And I love this stuff because it's very similar to the Makeup Forever Full Coverage Concealer, but just a little bit less like cakey and thick and a bit easier to work with. So the coverage you get from this is is kind of insane. You need the smallest, smallest amount. I've literally taken like a quarter of a grain of rice on my finger there and I'm just gonna smush that in between my fingers, apply it where I need it. I've got a nice little uh, pimple coming up there so pressing it down on that, pressing it around the nose and I'm gonna take a little bit extra on the tip of my nose as well because I am looking like Rudolph today. And then again, I'm just blending that in with my beauty blender because I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I don't traditionally powder every day, but I feel like for more of an evening outlook, I will throw a bit of powder on just to like stick everything in place. I'm going back in with my trusty Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit, which I'm kind of in love with. And I'm gonna use a mix of all of the powder shades. So I'm gonna use the Dim Light and Iridescent Light kind of mixed together as more of an all over setter. So that's just going down the center of my face where I'm gonna put any cheap product. And then under the eyes, I'm gonna pop some of the iridescent light with the diffuse light, which is the yellowy powder, and just set that all into place. And there's no way of doing that without making a ridiculous face. For cheap products, you could go in any old order that you fancy, but for me, I like to do contour, then a bit of bronzer, a bit of blush, a bit of highlight. And for contour, I'm gonna use my Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in the shade Medium, and this is right on its last legs. It's doing that thing where it kind of crumbles as you swirl the brush around it. But I'm, I'm gonna try and make this last and be very gentle with it, and try not to get it on my white dress. So just taking that on an angled brush and dusting it where I would like my cheekbones to be. <laughs> I'm going to dust over some of the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion in the shade M20 on a MAC 187 brush. Just sort of all over the face. This is a really good brush for bronzer because it's very difficult to go heavy handed with it. It just applies everything very lightly and naturally. I'm not even really looking in a mirror when I do this just warms everything up a little bit. I'm gonna apply a teeny weeny bit of blush because everything else that I'm gonna do on the face is quite warm and a bit ready, so it'd be nice just to have something a little bit kind of pinky on the cheeks to go with it. And yep, you've guessed it, I'm gonna use this from Tarte. This is their Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the shade Exposed, which is just one of my favorite cheek colors ever because it's so not there but there, you know what I mean? Taking that on my Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Brush and blending that over the apples of my cheeks. For highlighter, I'm gonna use what is probably one of my favorite makeup discoveries of the whole year. It is from Becca, and it is their Shimmering Skin Perfector in the pressed version, and this is Moonstone, which is just 
the most beautiful, beautiful highlight. If you've got quite a pale complexion like me, this is your perfect highlight partner because it's quite golden and yellow and it's not too obvious, but it is quite obvious. Oh, I just love it. Gonna take it on a Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush and kind of dust it off. Quite a lot comes off, so do a bit of dusting off and then just apply that on the tops of your cheekbones. And I genuinely tend to put it kind of everywhere. <laughs> Face are done, so I'm just going to quickly go over my brows, give them a quick brush with this Anastasia spoolie, and then I'm going to beef them up a little with this NYX eyebrow marker in the shade medium. I'm not going to go too crazy because I'm going to do quite a heavy ish eyeshadow look for once, so I don't want too much on the brows and too much going on on like the top third of my face. I've just thrown on some of the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but now Onto the good stuff, and I was umming and ahhing about what palette to use for this look. And in the end, I went for this one from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is her luxury palette color coded eyeshadow in the shade Vintage Vamp, which I think is just the perfect kind of party look palette because it's all very warm, it's very rusty, it's very festive looking. The gold is beautiful, it's almost like a pressed glitter pigment, so that looks amazing just pressed in over the center of the eye. But actually, the other shades you can make quite a daytime appropriate eye but tonight we're gonna go all out. I'm actually gonna use a trick that I haven't done in a video before, but I've been doing quite a lot recently, and it's using this little surgical tape. I don't, I think it's called surgical tape. I'm not sure if that's the official name for it, but it's just a tape you'd use for medical stuff, and I'm just gonna take off two strips and put them on the back of my hand to kind of get rid of most of their stickiness. Just rubbing them on there. And then I'm gonna do that thing where I apply it on the outer corners of my eye so I get that perfect line when I peel it away. And that way you get that real feline shape to your eyeshadow, which I was always really pants at doing. Without this, I can't do it. But with this, it's amazing when you pull it away and you just have this like smooth line. I like to blend it out a little so it's not so like stark and defined, but it's amazing if you want perfect eyeshadow for like an evening out or something. So the idea is that you follow that arch that goes up in your eyebrow and kind of mimic that on the bottom lash line. So so measuring it up with my arch, trying to keep that angle and then pushing it down on that outer corner. The hardest bit here is to get them symmetrical and you kind of never can. I really hope my postman doesn't arrive now. When I pull this bit away, I don't find that it actually takes off that much concealer. Because I've used the Beauty Blender all the way through, it's very easy just to tidy up underneath. So the first colour that I'm going to take is this pinky sort of champagne colour. And I'm just taking that on a MAC 242 all the way over the lid and being quite generous with it. This does look ridiculous, but I promise that it works. So now I'm just taking the slightly darker shade, this red one here, on a MAC 242 brush, sort of on that outer third, sort of half of the eye, dusting it into the crease and then also bringing it down onto the lid as well. When you feel like you've got your desired opaqueness with that colour, just take a really, really fluffy brush just to blend out that real outer edge. Then on this Zoeva 231 Petite Crease Brush, I'm going to take the darkest shade and sort of concentrate that. Take quite a bit on, dust them off on the back of your hand, and then concentrate that really in that outer V. I was a bit scared of this shade at first, but it really does help add that dimension and give that real smoky look to that outer corner. So then I'm always going in reverse with my brushes using the MAC 224 again to blend that in and then using the Bobbi Brown eye blender again over the top. Then I'm going to take my finger and press some of that golden glitter over the centre of the eye. I find that fingers work best for this if you try and do it with a brush you don't really end up picking anything up. But that just adds a bit of sparkle to the whole thing. Now you could take the tapes off here and just add a bit of liner and maybe do some like false lashes or something. But I'm gonna take a cold pencil. This is the CQ Gel Eyeliner Pencil in Bordeaux, which is a beautiful like wine deep burgundy color. So it really goes with the shades that we're using here. And I'm just gonna take that right along the outer corner. And then I'm gonna blend that in using that Zoeva Petite Crease Brush. Okay, now for the fun bit. Oh yeah. Whew. Ooh. So I like to just touch it up with the beauty blender underneath. I quite like just blending it out a little bit. So I take the Zoeva brush and just blend out that line a little bit so it's not so 
intense. Now I've just added in a little baby flick there with the CQ liner, but like I said, you could do gel liner, you could do false lashes, you could always bring the eyeshadow under the eye as well if you fancy, do a little inner corner highlight, but I'm gonna leave it there. And then I'm gonna go crazy with mascara, and for that I'm gonna use this. It's the Heroin Make Long and Curl Mascara, and I'm just gonna layer this on. I've gone very heavy-handed with the mascara there. I've even put some on my bottom lash line. I know, going all out today. But with lips, you could go bold or nude with this because it's quite like a ready, sort of like rusty eye, so you could go with that kind of similar tone on the lips. I couldn't find something that matched it just right in my collection, so if you have any recommendations, pop them below so people can check it out in case that's what they wanna do. But instead I have two nude lip recommendations and they're both matte and they're both ridiculously long lasting so we'll stay in place if you're kissing at midnight or whatever you're getting up to. And there's MAC Mare Lipstick, it's matte, it's mauve, it's beautiful. And then there's the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Can and this, whoa. That's a little bit more nudie, but probably a little bit more longer lasting. But I think today I'm going to go for MAC Mare because I just love the tone of this lipstick. I'm not going to bother with a lip liner. You could if you wanted to, but I just like that it looks a bit softer without. And for once I'm actually going quite heavy with lipstick because I really want this to stay in place. I'm not doing my usual like blotting thing. So that is the finished look. This is what I will be wearing tomorrow when I'm watching Jules Holland and eating lots of cheese. But I hope you have an amazing New Year's, whatever you decide to do. Stay safe and I will see you in the new year with some new videos. Way! See you then. Bye. What's that? Bye. <laughs>